You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, heading into the seventh inning, it is BYU trailing Santa Clara by a score of 11-3. Broncos are 9-3 when leading after six. BYU 1-10 when trailing after six. New pitcher for Santa Clara is the right-hander, number 18, Jared Ficus. First hitter for BYU, leading off the inning, the left-handed hitting Cole Gamble. BYU's right fielder, Gamble, looks at strike one from Ficus. Ficus will give you a fastball around 90. Be a slider in the mid-80s and a change in the low to mid-80s as well. It's the pitch menu for Ficus, who has Cole Gamble now looking at an 0-2 count after a foul back to the padding. Yeah, and he got ahead with a fastball and went to the changeup and Gamble fouled it back. Now with two strikes, just got to battle and put a ball in play. Cole Gamble, singled, stranded after a stolen base in the third. Base on balls in the fourth. Cole's actually a better hitter when he's down in the count. He does his, all his damage with two strikes. He, he shortens up at that point and does a really good job. Ball one offering there, so one and two. The first hitter of the seventh inning for BYU, Cole Gamble. Cougs down eight. That cut will put it foul. Maybe a roof hit. Yep. <laughs> Bang. 11 runs, 10 hits for the Broncos. BYU three runs, three hits. We've seen three errors, two for BYU. Cougars had two errors yesterday. The Broncos were error-free yesterday, and that's laced foul down the third baseline into the screen, the high screen. Again, this enclosure pretty well encased here in this residential neighborhood. And they still look out to the apartment complex to the right field wall there, and you see people observing on benches and on balconies and a nice little housing complex there as that singled into left center. So nice Cole Gamble, done, nice piece yeah. of hitting there. As he got behind in the count, worked it and drilled one to left center on the ground. It'll bring Brock Watkins to the plate. Watkins striking out and flying out in his first two plate appearances. Gamble reaching on a single to left center. So Cole Gamble's two for two today with a walk. Gamble needed a day like today. He was two for his last 23, yes. and then he goes two for two today. Yes, he did. Need to get Brock going. He's been struggling of late. In the series, he's 0 for 4 with three Ks. Brock Watkins. With his team down 11 to 3, the 1 0 from Ficus. That's Chopper, handled on the run by the third baseman. Fires gets Brock at first, advancing to second on the play as Cole Gamble. So Watkins is thrown out on the 5-3, and Gamble will advance to second. So we mentioned earlier that Watkins wears number two, except for today when he's in jersey number 12, and maybe now's the time to tell us why. Yeah, so in 2019, we were at University of Washington in Seattle playing a three-game series. And um, in game one or two of the series, I can't remember which one it was. I think it was game two, actually. Um, Noah Hill, who is now our, our graduate assistant on the staff, as this pitch comes. For strike one to the number nine hitter, Peyton Cole. Noah Hill was catching. Easton Walker was our pitcher. And uh, he threw a curveball that hit the turf plate, bounced straight up, and actually hit Noah underneath the mask on the throat. And it knocked him out. And... Uh, we thought, and he was out cold. Ambulance had to come. It was a scary situation. Had to come out on the field, carry Noah out on a stretcher, had to go to the ICU and and uh, have a trach put into him. It was a whole big ordeal. And uh, and luckily he just had a, a, a deep bruise there. We were worried because he was struggling breathing there for a while. Had to stay in the hospital for a couple of nights. But the, the ER staff had to slice that number two jersey mm. up because of uh, – going into the ICU. So that one is is sliced up and thrown away, and we'll never see that wow. one again. But lucky for Noah, um, he was two days in hospital, and he came back, and he was able to play, you know, four days later and was completely fine. So we, we, we lucked out. On a 1-1 count, Peyton Cole grounds out, 4-3, second to first, and two gone here now in the top of the seventh. Cole Gamble advancing to third on the ground out. Next hitter is the top of the order, Hunter Swap, and he tried to check. It goes to strike one. So Gamble singled 
And goes to second on the 5-3 ground out from Watkins. Goes to third on the 4-3 ground out from Cole. Back to the top of the order. Hunter Swap digs in and looks at 0-1. With two gone here. Runner on third. Here top seven. BYU down eight. It's grounded. Short uh, third baseman will throw to first. And a nice play by the third baseman. Sharp grounder. You wouldn't have been surprised if that got through for a run-scoring single, but it's cut off by the third baseman and a fine throw to first base. One, uh, No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on. Through six and a half, we go to the seventh inning stretch, and Santa Clara leads BYU by a score of 11-3. to three. The seventh inning stretch is brought to you by doTERRA. Pursue what's pure on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. First hitter in the bottom of the seventh for Santa Clara is the left fielder Michael O'Hara, number seven in the order, first in the inning, left-handed hitter, the only left-handed bat in the lineup today for the Broncos. A foul back and a ball one. Ball two on pitch number three from jersey number 24, Drew Zimmerman. Fifth pitcher to throw today for BYU. Cooks down eight, 11 to three here in the bottom of the seventh. 11 runs, 10 hits for Santa Clara. Three runs, four hits for BYU. Michael O'Hara fouls another one back. And again off the roof. Two and two the count with no one out and no one on. You're in the bottom of the seventh. Michael O'Hara's day today. Two for three with two runs scored and three RBI. RBIs in the second and third off singles as he... Flies out to center. And the first out of the seventh inning is recorded by O'Hara. Making the catch in center field, Mitch McIntyre. Matt Jew hit by pitch, stranded in the second. Base on balls and scored in the third. He then flied out to right in the fourth. So 0 for 1 with a base on balls and a hit by pitch for his day today. Matt Jew yesterday had the big blast, the three-run shot in the bottom of the second, part of a five-run bottom of the second for Santa Clara, and that was all the Broncos needed yesterday. 5-0 was our final. Today it's 11-3. Broncos leading BYU in the bottom of the seventh. The shadows begin to creep across the diamond here, just behind home plate. As we get late in the afternoon, the wind is calm as the swing by Jew... Make it two and one with one out here. Scoreboard shows none out, but there's an out here in the bottom of the seventh. That's lifted to right center. McIntyre and Gamble in the vicinity. Cole calls off and makes the catch. So two gone. And it'll bring up Dawson Brigman, the Santa Clara second baseman. Brigman walked, stranded in the second. Yeah. Reached and scored after an E1 in the third, and in the fourth, he was he grounded out 5-3. McKay Johnson, Cooper McKeehan, and, uh, and Zim now have done a really good job coming in relief. And once the Cougars got through that, uh, that third inning, they've been really steady. In fact, three up, three down in the fourth, fifth, and the sixth. Maybe again here in the seventh year, the 0-1 from Drew Zimmerman. Mmm, a layoff for one and one with two gone. So indeed, you know, the, of the six innings BYU's had, they've gone three up, three down, and four of them. It's just those other two went really the other way. As the Broncos batted around in both the second and the third in plating 11 runs. Four and seven in the second and the third. That's ball. Two and one with two out. And the base is empty here in the bottom of the seventh. Cougars 1-9 this year when trailing after 7. They'll be trailing after 7 here today as they're down 11-3. to three. Three-game set will conclude tomorrow with a 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain Time first pitch. The 3-1, the that's ball 4, getting away from Josh to the backstop. So a 5-pitch walk from Drew Zimmerman, and the Broncos have a base runner. So after the Cougars retired... 12 consecutive batters... Uh, hitter reaches for the Broncos. 
Yeah, two-hour walk usually somehow find a way to haunt you. Zim needs to find a way to keep putting up zeros here. Got nine outs to go offensively. Hmm. Indeed. Twelve have been retired consecutively until that base on balls by Brigman. Brings up brother Coleman. Dawson Brigman at first. Coleman Brigman at the dish. Right-handed hitting Coleman Brigman. Right-handed throwing Drew Zimmerman. We're at the bottom of the seventh, and the Cougs down eight. 11-3 our score. Cougs were down 11 nothing before getting two back on an Andrew Pintar two-run home run. Got another one on an Andrew Pintar solo shot. Ripped foul down the third baseline. And the wind blowing from left to right field. Northwesterly breeze here at Stephen Schott Stadium. I'm glad you know the direction in California. Without the mountains, I get lost. I know. I try and get myself acclimated. One of the first things I do, I get out the old compass app and start figuring things out. Usually you can tell from your maps on your phone, but as that one's lifted foul again down the left field line. So stay one and two with two out. And the runner at first is Dawson Brigman. Coleman Brigman, who we determined has now handled 119 collegiate fielding chances with, without an error in center yeah, field. That's impressive. Now if he was like an infielder, that'd be even more yeah, impressive. Clearly, yeah. <laughs> As it is, you want your yes. you want your outfielder sure-handed, and that's certainly what he's been. And that's a ball skipped to Joshua Cowden. And they've caught Josh a little bit. It'll be ball two. Two and two with two gone. And the runner at first is Dawson Brigman. Coleman Brigman at the plate. Coleman's day today. Two for four. With two RBI and a run scored. And a bunt single in the third after a traditional single in the second. That's a swing and strike out. Good the Cougs pitch. are out of the seventh inning. After seven complete, no runs, no hits, no errors. A man left on. Broncos 11, Cougars 3 after seven on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. First batter for BYU in the top of the eighth inning is the first baseman, Cooper Vest. Strike one to Coop. BYU down 8, 11 to 3. That's strike two. So relief pitcher Jared Ficus ahead of Cooper Vest 0 and 2 here in the top of the eighth. Coop 1 for 12 at the plate on the year. And limited at bats, making just his fourth start of the year. It's lined off a hop and off the chest of the yeah, shortstop. That'll be a hit there. That'll be a hit there. That was hit, hit really well, sharp yeah. and a one hop off the uh, sternum of the shortstop, Dico Chea. And so Cooper Vest goes from 1 for 12 to 2 for 13 on the single off the shortstop. And the Cougars have a leadoff runner aboard in the top of the eighth in a game they trail by eight. Yeah, well, well Coop's hit a lot of balls hard so far in his minimal at-bats this year. It's a young, talented freshman that has a really bright future, not only defensively, but on the mound as well. Cooper Vest came in as a defensive replacement yesterday, had a walk. Now he has his first hit of this series, an infield single. BYU's fifth hit of the day. Three runs on five hits for BYU. The Broncos, 11 runs on 10 hits. They've not scored since the third. That's when they put up seven. Cougs have scored the last three of this game. Mitch McIntyre in the box and quickly two strikes on Mitch swinging strike there that's the thing about that seven run inning if you could just minimize those innings you know this game would still be somewhat in reach I'm not saying it's not but eight runs in you know the last three innings is tough to come back from but if you can minimize just even that fourth that third inning to a couple of runs this is you know a you know probably a seven to three maybe 8-3 to three game, and, and and at that point, you still have a legit chance, especially the last couple innings where we've had guys on base, you know, with a chance to score more runs. Mitch McIntyre fouls it down the first baseline. 0-2. Oh None out, one on, top eight. Off speed and high for ball one. 
One and two to jersey number six, Mitch McIntyre, left-handed hitting center fielder, hitting number three today. And he is 0 for 3 today. Ground out, fly out, strike out. I thought jersey number 6 was on deck. They announce it <laughs> twice, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> They've announced Andrew Pintar's jersey number 6. And after number 6 has already been at, at the plate right before him. and Worked last time as he hit a second consecutive home run. And Pintar's on deck. He's accounted for all the RBIs today for BYU. Two-run shot, solo shot in the fourth and the sixth. McIntyre's at the plate, though, on a 2-2 count. And that's ripped foul. Into the high screen down the third baseline. You can feel, e- even when the sun dropped behind the stadium yesterday, it was still really warm, and now you feel the coolness of, well, what should be April. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The normal temps you get in this area. That really has dropped a good 10 to 15 degrees off of yesterday's high 80s. That's a swinging strikeout for Mitch. Caught a piece of it, but into the catcher's glove it goes for out number one here in the top of the eighth. At first base is Cooper Vest, and Mitch McIntyre's retired via the frontwards K for the second time today and the second consecutive at-bat. Speaking of consecutive at-bats, number four, Andrew Pintar, comes to the plate off home runs in consecutive plate appearances. Two-run shot and solo shot. It's gotten BYU the three runs after going down 11 nothing. Andrew with the runner at first, Cooper Vest taking his lead. Well, the impressive thing, too, is he hit a he hit a fastball full count out of here, and he hit a, a full count slider out of here, so he's hit both of their best pitches. Third pitcher for the Broncos, Jared Ficus on a 1-0. Strike one. Piped in with one out. It's one on for the Cougs in the top of the eighth inning. BYU's down eight. 11-0 was the advantage before the Cougars chip back with Pintar home runs in the fourth and the sixth to make it an eight-run game. That's chopped. Well handled by the third baseman. Go to second for one and to first. Don't get the second there. A layout catch by McNichols at first, but he was taken off the bag. And so reaching is McIntyre, but thrown out at second is best. Man, I don't know how he made that play at third. It took that extra hop. And usually when it takes that extra hop on an infielder, it's going to eat him up. But he was able to, lucky enough, keep his glove on plane and field that. I thought for sure that was going to be by him or off of him. Good play by the third baseman. So we go fielder's choice there to get uh, yep. Andrew to first and two out here in the eighth. That will bring Joshua Cowden to the dish. BYU's catcher today, Joshua Cowden with hits in five of six coming in two today. Went one for two yesterday. 0 for three today. Strike out, fly out, fly out. Runner at first on strike one. Ball one, strike one with two out. The runner on first is Pintar. Fielder's choice as Vest was retired on the sharp grounder to third. And it was really well handled. That was just putting his glove and hoping... The ball ends up where he wanted it to, and it did. Well handled at third. Chopped down the first baseline. Again, that was kind of ball that if it had gotten past the third baseman, you would have understood it. It was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if that, I mean, that, that gets by. The scorekeeper up there actually has a decision to make, like, hey, that's a tough play. I yeah. might actually give it a hit instead of an error just because that was not easy. That's not a normal play. 1-2 the count with two out here in the top of the eighth. The righty Ficus, off speed, and out in front of it with a swinging strikeout is Joshua Cowden. He K's for the second time today. And the Cougars will run up to end the top of the eighth after seven and a half. No runs, one hit, there were no errors. One runner was left on for BYU. Santa Clara 11, BYU 3 to the bottom of the eighth on on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Pitching change for BYU brought to you by PZ Printing. PZ Printing, nothing inspires like print. Moving over from third base to the pitcher's mound is Peyton Cole. Jacob Rogers will replace Peyton at third base, and one Jacob will replace another in the batting order, as Wilk will be replaced by Rogers the next time the Cougars come to the plate. But we're in the bottom of the eighth, and with Cole on the mound, ball one, the delivery to shortstop Jason DiCochea. That's ball two from Peyton. Peyton Cole today making his third pitching appearance, 4.50 ERA. 
And batter hitting 313 against him. Just four innings of work. Five hits, two runs, both earned. Three Ks and a base on balls in his four innings prior to today. 11 to 3, the score. Foul back into the screen by Di Cochea. Got a 2 and 1. First batter here in the bottom of the eighth is the shortstop, Di Cochea. And his day today is 1 for 4 with a run scored, 2 RBI. It was a 2 RBI single in the third. He then scored on a home run. 11 to 3, the score. And that's a single to right center. Beyond the outstretched glove of the second baseman, Pintar. Fired back in, keeping Dico Chea at first. So Dico Chea's second hit of the day. He goes two for five on the day. And a runner at first now with no one gone in the bottom of the eighth. Coming to plate, Jake McNichols. Yeah, they did a good job of just taking a fastball and hitting it that way. Peyton Cole looks at first. Dico Chea taking his lead. The hits leader, Dico Chea, with two singles today and two RBI. Peyton Cole is BYU's sixth pitcher today. The righty Cole. The 0 1 goes to 1 and 1. Coming into play third base, number 16, Jacob Rogers in the sixth spot in the order. So McNichols puts the bat on his right shoulder. And the righty Cole prepares to come plateward. That's popped up by McNichols. Pintar waving off Watkins. Andrew backpedaling, backpedaling, and then drops for a hit in short center and advancing on the play is Dico Chea. So first and second, none out. Yeah, uh, Brock was going to get it, and then Pintar called him off, and then the wind just kept pushing that ball back, 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 and, and Peyton needs to go cover second right away on that. And he got there late in the ball. Even though the ball was dropped, if it had Peyton got to second, it would have been the force out easy at second, but he got there late in time, not in time, so it's going to be a hit, but that's a ball that should be made. Miscommunication there by the middle. So first and second, and none out here in the bottom of the eighth. As that will be called a single to shortstop on a foul back off the roof here to the next hitter, Mike Bowes. And so Dico Che at a second. As McNichols singles to short left center on a ball that Pintar appeared to have tracked down. So back-to-back -back singles here. For Santa Clara in the bottom of the eighth, and again they lead by eight, 11 to three. The 0-1 with none out and two on. And that's ripped by Bose off a hop, handled by Pintar, step on second, fired good, to first, and good. two out. Double play, well done. Really good play by so Pintar. So one, one batter after yeah. Pintar had trouble with the play yeah. that drops, he ends up making a really nice play and turns two, handling a hard grounder and then stepping yeah. on second to fire. Yeah, really good play there. Misplay the pop fly, and usually the ball finds you right after you make a. I call it an error. The ruling isn't going to be an error because they think he lost in the sun. But. Yeah. Advancing on the play is Dico Chea to third. So a runner at third now and two out on the double play. Bottom eight. Eight run lead for Santa Clara. Tony Boeto hits. Cole on the hill. And Boeto, who's three for four today with two runs scored, digs in. Well, they're seven for 14 today with runners in scoring position. Mm. That will uh, that'll do it right there. The 1-0 lays off to strike one. One and one from Peyton Cole. Cole making his third appearance. His previous uh, outings have gone uh, two and a third and one and two thirds. In games BYU lost 11 to six at Texas State and 12 to six at Texas. He comes in in a game again where the Cougars face a large deficit. Let's pop up to first base. Cooper Vest coming in and making the catch just on the line. And the Cougars are out of the inning with a man on third. Nicely done, Peyton. So no runs, two hits, one left on here in the bottom of the eighth. After eight, and a half, after eight complete, we go to the ninth with Santa Clara leading BYU 11-3 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Cooks are down to three outs, trailing by eight. Brian Call 
Pinch hits to lead off the ninth for BYU. Santa Clara 11, BYU 3. Broncos 11 runs 12 hits. BYU 3 runs 5 hits. Cougs committed two errors. The Broncos won. As Brian Call swings, strike one. Swings, strike two. From Jared Ficus, the third pitcher for the Broncos here in the ninth inning. Broncos working with an eight-run cushion. The Broncos hang on for a fourth straight win. They will have had BYU a fourth straight loss. It's laced by Call to left. Left fielder, ranging over to his left and makes the grab. Michael O'Hara towards the first out of the ninth inning. Yeah, BYU opened WCC play 4-0. Three wins at LMU. A series opening win against USF. The Dons then took the final two of last weekend's series at home. And the Broncos are on the verge of taking the first two of this series here in Santa Clara. So one gone here, top nine. Yeah, great start. And obviously things haven't been going well the last four games. But uh, need to come out here tomorrow and, and sneak a win. Cole Gamble, one hopper to the second baseman. Bobble that didn't handle it clean, but recovers throws and gets Gamble at first. The second baseman, Brigman, didn't handle it cleanly. Picked it up off the ground after it came out of his glove and fires to catch Gamble at first. And so two gone, and Brock Watkins will come to the plate here in the top of the ninth, BYU's last hope. And again, the Cougars trail by eight. So the 4-3 ground out by Gamble. Brock struck out, flied out, and grounded out today. And that's strike one from Ficus. So the Cougs will fall to 0-5 against left-handed starters if they go down here in the ninth. The righty Ficus. That's a rip to left on the run, making the catch is Michael O'Hara, and that will do it. So three up and three down for BYU in the top of the ninth. Final score is Santa Clara 11 and BYU 3. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on in the ninth. We'll come back for postgame coverage after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Santa Clara.